we can begin this incredible experience. Hey, Penny from Wisconsin and Jason Kaplan from Indiana and Morning Sun from Montana. I uh, am Dr. Darren Weissman, and this is my beautiful friend, Prince Alfred from Liechtenstein. And we want to welcome you to Wake Up and Dream. And this is a three-part, free webinar series based upon both Prince Alfred and my passion and purpose to be a light in the world and to share with love and to share with gratitude the joy of living consciously the understanding of our mind, our body, our dreams, and our desires, and how we can access our fullest and greatest potential for designing and co-creating our life. I'm so excited to share this journey with you. And today's webinar is called The Portal of Consciousness. And we're going to be going into the concept of dreams. And dreams are one of the few ways we have to see into our unconscious and to understand what is beneath the surface of our limited outer awareness. Our dreams give us a view into what we are not able to perceive in our everyday lives. And the subconscious mind, which is where the dreams are harnessed from, it's like a, it's like a bird soaring high above a road that we on our lives are traveling. And the subconscious mind can perceive more than our conscious mind in any, in every given moment. So the more that we learn to recall and understand our dreams, the better we understand our deeper motivations, the better we understand our fears, our desires, and our unconscious knowing. It's been said that nothing occurs in our lives that is not first foreshadowed in our dreams. And in the dream state, we open our minds to many different levels of consciousness. It's multi-dimensional, just like this webinar is, and we're coming from places all over the world in different time zones and different latitudes and longitudes that our dream state opens our minds to many different levels of this unconscious realm. And not only are all of our previous experiences that we've ever had are stored in this unconscious subconscious realm, but it's also the storehouse of resources which oftentimes rarely come to our awareness. We don't know what we don't know until we know it. So the subconscious mind has truly remarkable talents for finding solutions to the perceived problems that we face in life. In the lifeline technique that I teach, we call problems portals because where we're in pain, fear, and stress is a doorway to the subconscious realm. It's a doorway to our dreams. In this doorway, houses all of our wishes, all of our hopes, our memories, past experiences. And what's amazing is when we're able to bridge to this vibration and these frequencies and these memories and these wishes and these desires, it assists us with understanding who we are, why we're here. It gives us this practical guidance for any question you might have. 
In fact, the question opens the door to the dream, which the dream then gives us a quest, a quest of full consciousness, a quest of full knowing of the truth of the light of who we are. It makes it possible for us to be psychically aware, audient, buoyant, and sentient in the most extraordinary ways. Dreams have a language. It's a language all of their own. It's a language of imagery and symbolism and bizarre activity. Dreams hold the power to evolve our consciousness. In our subconscious mind, which is such a passion for me and lucid dreaming, which is such a passion for my dear friend, Prince Alfred, our subconscious mind is the mind of our soul. And our superconscious mind, which is the mind of our divine self, they're always attempting to correlate and connect events and decisions with this eternal spiritual essence of living a life of purpose. So powerful how dreams empower us to feel and reveal our soul's longing to know itself. So today we embark upon a journey. We embark upon a journey together. We are waking up and dreaming. And in this dream, we hold a portal and it is a doorway to the next greatest version of yourself, your life, your health, your relationships, and your future. And um, I'm so excited and I know Prince Alfred is so excited as well. This is very funny because my buddy here, we met through a beautiful, beautiful woman, Tatiana from Switzerland, who bridged us together. And Prince Alfred and I started talking and dialoguing. And we realized that our conversations were uh, nothing short of beautiful and authentic and meaningful. And we realized we needed to share this with other people. We knew that there was something positive to um, reveal. And so here we are, a dream has already come to fruition. And um, thank you so much, Prince Alfred, for being here with me. I'm so grateful to be here with you. Well, thank you very much, Darren. Uh, I enjoy tremendous to speak with you and and uh, I think uh, that it's really uh, in dialogue uh, that, that we can proceed and that we can grow. And, and it's so important uh, to, to have this kind of dialogue uh, all around the world because our world today is really in, in some ways in a mess. And I mean, it's a kind of very conflicting world. And, and so I think dialogue across cultures, dialogue across borders, uh, dialogue across dimensions, uh, uh, and, and, and just a meeting from uh, person to person. Uh, uh, th that's great, and that's the best what we can do. It really is. It really is. And, you know, um, when we first started talking, you asked me a question that really put me at a loss for words, and it's often that it's difficult for me to be at a loss for words, but your question was, so Dr. D, what is reality? What does it mean, reality? What does this mean? And so I'd like to ask you this question because you know our, our topic today is about the portal of consciousness. And we're going we're gonna to be going into what this means, energy, emotions, living in the present moment, and how this affects us in our health and our relationships 
individually, but also, as you were saying, in the world that we're all interconnected, where we're all one. My friend, what is reality to you? Well, I, I think um, I first will uh, uh, go into the term consciousness. Uh, you, you see, because we uh, also in, in metaphysics and, and uh, people in spirituality, we talk all the time about consciousness. And, and we think that this is something given. Yeah? We think that we talk about the same thing. Now, um, uh, of course, we know that scientists have a certain way to define consciousness. And, 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 and let's say in the spirituality field, uh, 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 this does not always uh, uh, is the same definition. But um, now I'm going directly into dreaming and lucid dreaming. And everything I tell you now uh, what, in connection with consciousness in dreams applies also to the so-called reality of today. So now uh, in, in the dreaming, in, in becoming lucid uh, from a normal dream to become lucid, uh, this is a continuum where you go through certain stages. Most of the time you become lucid. Uh, so, and, and these are certain stages or states of consciousness. And I think this is exactly the same in the so-called day and awake real reality and real world. So how you start in the dream in the so-called non-lucid phase. That means you are fully involved in a dream and in the activities and, and the uh, um, things which are happening during the dream and you are not aware that you are dreaming. You are just consumed fully into the action. Yeah, and therefore, if it's a, if it's a nightmare, you, uh, 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 you, you feel threatened and, and you are afraid of dying and you run away and so on. If it's a pleasure, a pleasure full dream, then you are fully in this. So, but this is non-lucid phase. Uh, that means it's a it's an awareness um, uh, which we all have in our everyday life and most uh, probably most of the higher developed animals yeah we are just acting supposedly in a in a in an outside world and we feel ourselves part of of the action okay so then when lucidity uh, um, uh, becomes slowly up, you are in a kind of sub-lucid phase. Uh, this means you are at the threshold where uh, you slowly realize that you are dreaming. Yeah. So uh, it's also usually not one point uh, and, and just one one step, but it's a continuum. So I give you an example. Past night, I, I had a dream with uh, uh, President Trump. Yeah, Tr President Trump and, and the first lady <laughs> in some uh, surrounding and, and she gave a speech and he was uh, interrupting her and so on. Now I, I, I followed with interest the, the, the action, but, but the hair, uh, of uh, of President Trump was very different than in reality. So he had a very uh, bushy hair. <laughs> you know, it was very strong hair. Now um, I started to observe this, and I said to myself in the dream, something is not okay. I mean. Trump looks today very different and he looks so different with his new hair that this can't be fully real. So this is the stage where the lucidity slowly comes up and the dreamer recognizes something is not as it should be, yeah, mm. or something is strange here. Mm. Okay, now the third phase. Um, is where you become functional lucid. Uh, that means now you know that you are dreaming, but you are not in, the, in, in, in possession of your full cognitive abilities. 
uh, as they as you have them in the awake uh, day state yeah so you you are aware that you are dreaming but you are not fully in the uh, cognitive abilities in, uh, 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 as in an awake state. Now, next phase, the fourth phase, you can say, uh, is a full lucidity. Uh, that means you have no cognitive limitations anymore. anymore. Your, your consciousness is very clear as it is during the day in, 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 in awake state. So, and, and the dreamer then uh, feels that he is in full possession of his ability. That means his intellect is working, his memory is fully working, and he his will is functioning. Yeah. So, and with this full lucidity, you can now become the director of your dream. You can mm -hmm. really uh, manifest whatever you want. You can travel wherever you want to go to, and so on, and so on. Yeah, and then, but then there is another uh, phase which I would call maybe the the meta lucid uh, phase, which is a mystical experience. Uh, this means you you are beyond your conscious uh, uh, day, con uh, be, be beyond your daily uh, um, uh, consciousness. It's a higher form of consciousness where you are fully aware that you are in a dream. You are fully aware who you are awake, and 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 you can, so to speak, uh, go in another um, dimension. So this is what I wanted to to say about lucid dreaming and and mm. the phases in, through which you go usually uh, to uh, in in lucid dreaming. And I think it's absolutely the same in, in, in the uh, daily reality. And therefore, dreaming is such a wonderful way to learn more about yourself. And we will talk about other uh, things which you can do in lucid dreaming. But this means that most people in our daily reality are non-lucid yet, that they are, uh, you know, they are not full conscious. Right on. Um, thank you. Um, I just want to take a moment just to acknowledge that every time we have a conversation, I learn something new that is such a light bulb moment. And I'm so appreciative and grateful for the specific levels of consciousness that we go through, the portals that we go through during the dream state to awaken to an enlightened being while we are fully in the subconscious realm. I find this absolutely fascinating because these same stages are the stages that we use in the lifeline technique in the day world, in the so-called awakened world, are we really awake? We will Is talk about this later. <laughs> we have to, because the, it, cause the, and I just love the parallel dimensions that are going here, because there's an essence that here we are in this awakened state, and are we really awake? There's this non-lucid state where as much as our eyes are open, I'm hearing, I'm smelling, I'm tasting, but what am I hearing? What am I smelling? What am I seeing? Am I perceiving reality or am I perceiving what I've been believing based upon programs and memories that live in my subconscious mind, which perpetuate the reactive realities in our life that cause us to do things and behave in particular ways that lead us to places that we don't want to be happening, whether it be our health, our relationships, and circumstances. And then there's a process where we start to observe. And in our observation, we start to become sublucid, where we slowly start to awaken to the reactive reality 
However, we're still not awake, even though we're aware that we're not choosing this. We're not in a conscious state, we're in the subconscious state until all of a sudden we reach this discernible place in our heart where we become functionally lucid and we know that this is a reactive part of me that's driving disease in my body, that's driving um, stress and suffering in my life and in the world. And now here I am and I have available, it's not here yet, we still have to go to the next level. I have available full lucidity, which we can access through our heart. Mm -hmm. And through this, we discover this divinity, this essence of desire that guides us into the fullest potential of who we are, where we become awake. We become, we become capable of dancing with our mind, with our body, with the patterns in our relationship. And until we reach this phase of meta-lucid, where we have the ability to fully design and create and manifest a life we love to live. I teach this in the lifeline, but in our talks, I never heard you mention these five phases, which is just so cool because once again, it, and I, I knew this when we first talked, but now I know it even more that not only are we able, and I can't wait to learn more from you about how to trigger these different phases and step into them and become more comfortable and confident in being awake and lucid in the dream, but also to be able to be in the dream where we learn how to do the lifeline process of raising consciousness while asleep. Because I actually, in my sleep state, I am doing the lifeline all the time, all over. I'm always doing, I, it just, it's just part of it, just part of who I am. Yeah. But absolutely fascinating, absolutely fascinating. You know, as you've had so much experience with this, um, I would love if you wouldn't mind sharing as a result of being a, um, veteran of diving into this realm of lucid dreaming. Um, one, on one level, how did this even start for you? When did you realize this? And, and maybe share some of the experiences you've had while in the lucid state, uh, lucid states along the way. Yes. If, if you don't mind, I will first uh, co continue briefly uh, uh, to answer your first question what is reality yeah um, cool. uh, because you see the the fascinating part of dreaming and then becoming lucid in dreaming shows how um, able we are how uh, what, what uh, incredible uh, creativity each human being has because we can create a full world yeah this is a dream so in 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 once you are non-lucid um, you take the dream as full reality yeah uh, you you feel pain emotional pain you feel physical pain uh, you feel joy you feel whatever you are fully immersed in a reality and you have no way out. As long as you are in a dream, uh, everything is fully and 100% real because you are not lucid. You understand? So you are fully immersed. That means we see in a dream, in a normal dream, that we can create our reality, but not only little pieces, but a whole world. We are creating our world every night in all our dreams yeah and and this is always a slightly different world because there is a dream i but this dream i 
can change even in one night if you have several dreams you once you are a king and once you are a beggar once you are a man and once you are a woman and so on so so uh, you creating your reality but you don't know that you have created this reality because you believe it is real yeah <laughs> you, in the dream. you understand so yeah. now uh, now, uh, the, when, now, then I spoke about the different continuums of becoming lucid. Now, let's say now you are more or less uh, lucid in the dream. Now you understand that you are able to create reality and manifest, but you don't know necessarily exactly how to do it because a lucid dream, even if you are fully lucid, this does not mean that you control the whole dream. So uh, still you have, let's say, something which you can call maybe subconscious and, and other parts where in, when you are lucid, you can create and control fully. Yeah? So, uh, uh, but you know now, if you are fully lucid, that you are creating your dream eye that my Alfred, yeah, my name, that if I'm lucid, that I'm now in a dream and the dream Alfred is not the real Alfred because I am now lucid and I'm an observer who can uh, observe the own creation Alfred and in his environment. Yeah, so mm -hmm. now, and this is again, in my view, the same and in my experience in the everyday or uh, everyday life. Yeah. So as long as you are fully um, in action and you are basically just looking outwards and you are experiencing uh, and, and uh, your outside world and you are fully um, part of it, and you don't know that you are just creating this, yeah, or to a good degree. Uh, and, and once you become more lucid in, in your day life, then you can manifest or start, I mean, if you're full lucid, you can start to manifest and so on. So that means, now, what's the difference between a dream and the so-called reality, yeah? subjective uh, i repeat um, if you are in the dream it's full reality to you um, but if you wake up you understand it was just a dream yeah and if you become lucid in the dream you can continue to dream but you know it's just a dream yeah so in everyday life you can do the same uh, now uh, i think to my uh, uh, my experience and view also our wake experience and everyday uh, day uh, consciousness is also a dream but this is a collective dream so uh, historically we have created jointly uh, what we see and therefore we are in different cultures and so on because now many people together have created this dream and are perpetuating this dream but you can become lucid. You can become fully lucid and understand that also your day experience is also a dream in which you can become lucid and create and manifest. And you can kind of step out of this dream. So for me, in short now, the question, what is reality? Reality is just uh, relatively real because it is a dream. Yeah, but of course, subjectively, it's real, real, but from a higher point of view, it's, it's just an illusion, it's just in a dream. It's amazing. And for people that might be, you know, new to the world, the world where we're talking about the conscious mind and the awake mind and the subconscious mind and the dreaming mind, you know, some interesting facts about this is our conscious perception or reality in any given moment is about two to 10% of a moment. Our conscious mind is able to take in um, much less than what the subconscious is perceiving in any and every given moment. The subconscious mind makes up the other 90 to 98%. So 
from our conscious reality when we are awake, when we are lucid, in our perception gives us feedback of our environment, we have at our, at our, at our essence of who we are, the ability to make a choice. Maybe, maybe not. But the nature of the subconscious mind, which is this like a submarine, it's below the surface, it's subconscious. This invisible mind that makes up 90 to 98 percent of who we are, it is orchestrating right now every one of the trillions of cells in our body. And it is enabling us to function and breathe and pump blood to and from and eat a breakfast if you're in Chicago or lunch if you're in Austria or, you know, hopefully I'm not eating at 12 o'clock at midnight right now here for me, but it enables our body to function. But the subconscious mind also stores memories. And this is where the dream state becomes interesting because all memories, all memories, our own from our life, lifetimes, generations, individually, family, culturally, the world, all memories are stored in the subconscious mind. Everyone's subconscious mind is interconnected. Our conscious mind says, there's my buddy, Prince Alfred. He's over there, I'm over here. That's different, that's separate, okay. But the subconscious mind is not capable of perceiving um, separation. It does not know the difference between reality or imagination. And so when this subconscious mind gets activated in particular memories that we haven't fully processed, when they haven't been fully integrated, those memories stay in the time zone that they're in. And they become emotionally charged based upon the signature of the time zone. And when these memories get triggered, we form in our dream state, a cycle of thoughts and patterns of perception based upon whatever this memory is. It affects us in our brain where our brain is not capable of going through what are called REM states of sleep. When the brain is not able to go through REM states, it means that the memory, that short term, can't be processed into long term. And so it becomes this groundhog day. Oftentimes we have these repetitious dreams that we dream over and over again. But it not only happens there, which has a very important impact where if we don't process our dreams, if we don't process in the deep states of REM, the third and fourth states of REM, our body doesn't heal. We don't learn. We don't grow and evolve as human beings. So it, it, it influences us in our waking state. And these memories of the past hijack the present. They get triggered by our senses. They get triggered by our environment. And these memories that are in our subconscious mind hijack the present and now the past repeats itself. And let's say there's a little boy who's still in the womb where my mother's heart is beating with anxiety or grief or depression or at any stage throughout life from conception to seven our minds is like wet cement. It's very impressionable. And so these memories take a hold and take root. And all of a sudden, this in utero part of me 
shows up throughout my life, affecting my health, allergies, digestion, hormones, cardiovascular system, patterns that we often see in our family, patterns that we often see in our culture. And these patterns affect us in profound ways. And what's powerful, and this is, you know, the essence of waking up and dreaming, the first, to me, the foundation that becomes a bridge between what we're talking about here is when we find ourselves in our waking life or our dream state, that it's a nightmare and it just sucks. And we're afraid and we're anxious and our body is, is on low energy. That, when we can learn to recognize this is a part of me that is non-lucid. This is a part of me that has no awareness of itself. This is not my problem. This is my portal. It's the big word. This is my portal, my doorway to the subconscious mind. It is the portal to consciousness. And it gives us an ability if we follow particular steps to raise our consciousness and therefore shift and evolve our reality from fear-based patterns to love-based patterns. We have the ability to do this. And um, today, one of the things that I'd really love to circle into is the concept of being present in the dream, whether it be the sleeping dream or the waking dream, being present. So I know I asked you a question about dreams and how they affect our reality and the different stages. But I'd, I'd love to hear your perspective on being present as you go through these dimensions of lucidity, of awakening. What does it mean to be present as you do this? And like, like, how did you figure out for yourself that you were lucid dreaming? How has it impacted you in your life? What are some experiences that you've had along the way? Okay. Um, um, you know, when, when um, in my early childhood, um, uh, I had a lot of nightmares. Uh, mm. It was... It was um, a few years after the Second World War. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, born at 51. And, and so I was always dreaming war dreams. And I don't know why. Yeah? Maybe because in, in you know, what happened in the collective subconscious or whatever. I mean, uh, terrible things I was dreaming. And, uh, and uh, so I, um, it became so intense that I was, um, uh, that I was uh, afraid of uh, falling asleep uh, at this time, because I knew uh, the moment I will fall asleep again, I will come into nightmares. Uh, so uh, this was a great pain uh, to me. And one day, I cannot tell you why and how, uh, uh, but one day I became lucid, or at least um, uh, uh, to a good degree lucid. Yeah, I understood uh, uh, that this is just a dream, and from mm -hmm. this moment on, you know, I I was not afraid anymore of going to sleep, and uh, of course it, it's not pleasant to have nightmares, um, but. 
uh, but uh, because it's it's like if you see something in the so-called reality which is not pleasant then you have also emotions uh, but uh, i understood that this is an, this is a dream and so i started to uh, help many friends dream friends uh, in in my dream because whenever you know there was a killing and shooting or something like this i told them uh, hey you run away guys i stopped the enemy or i stopped the bad people uh, and then they said no but they will kill you i just laughed in the dream and i said no no uh, for me it's just a dream for you it's real uh, but for me it's a dream i will hold them they cannot kill me it doesn't matter if they shoot me then i'm just awake up maybe or whatever they cannot kill me so this uh, this was uh, um, in, in, in my early childhood uh, something which happened to me and um, of course I did not know that it's uh, lucid dreaming and, and, and for me it was very natural and I thought uh, that everybody is dreaming like this. Um, uh, but many, many years later I came across then um, of, of the concept of lucid dreaming and I understood that I uh, uh, that I very often had lucid uh, dreams uh, uh, in my life already. So I mean, what lesson we can draw from this is uh, that you see that now, if in the dream, if you have a nightmare uh, and you become to a certain degree at least lucid, so that means that you understand that you are dreaming, uh, then just confront yourself with what causing fear what causing pain to you yeah you don't run away uh, because then you are driven uh, by the dream and you are not lucid uh, but but if if they uh, if people are attacking you then don't run away just stop and turn towards them and tell them i know this is just a dream disappear out of my life for instance yeah and pop uh, they are gone so you have, full, you have full actualization in the dream when you're lucid you have full ability to create instantaneous and spontaneous change in a moment in what i called the functional full functional lucidity yes uh, you can bring in people uh, like really like a director on a stage, a theater stage or in a film. Uh, you, you can say, I want now him and her and you name the names come in. Or I want now that a car uh, uh, comes and fe 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 fetch me. Or I can say, I want to go to Buenos Aires and I want to uh, look and 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 we made certain tests i mean you it's like remote viewing if you can if you do this yeah then you are really there now again this is then very often if you check it you you have been in the presence then there where you have where, where you wanted to go do you understand if i if i visit somebody um, uh, in, in, in a full lucid dream, uh, then I, mm, oh, it seems in many cases at least, uh, that you really see this person in that moment what the person is doing. Or if you uh, look, uh, if you travel to another city, then you see what happens in this city at this moment. You know, I had a dream once where in it i woke up and i realized that i was speaking fluent german mm -hmm. and i was aware that i don't know how to speak anything other than sprechen sie deutsch but mm -hmm. that's it and so but i was like speaking fluent i was understanding it and i was and i said to myself i'm like whoa okay you know German right now in your dreaming, you got to come out with this. And so I was talking to myself saying, how cool would this be to come out of this dream 
speaking another language. Like that is better than any Rosetta Stone learning ever. Like I can learn it just like that. And as I was coming out of the dream, it was like, zoop, and it just went away. There's a couple things here. There's a couple things here, but I have one specific question for you. Um, one is the concept of forgetting our dreams after we wake up. We have these vivid dreams and oftentimes we forget them. That's one component. That's not as important right now because we can get into that another time. But you shared with me in a conversation about how you've begun to test and evaluate with other lucid dreamers the ability to go in and prove that lucid dreaming is real and dancing in this invisible world and co-creating and manifesting and designing from this, from this meta place is actualized. Would you mind sharing the research that you've begun and also about your imaginatorium that you've got going on in Austria and what this is all about for our viewers, because this is part of a bigger picture for all of us on the planet to wake up and dream. Okay. Um, uh, well, I started many years ago for myself to do certain research uh, in, in, in the dreams uh, because I, I am basically a scientist or uh, let's say a scientific mind at least. Yeah. So I, I was so interested in what is reality, what is dream, what, 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 how does this work together, how does it overlap and, and so on. So um, I, I started to confront uh, uh, beings in my dream when I became lucid, then I spoke with them and I asked them, are you aware that you are in a dream and that this is my dream? Yeah. And, and, and so uh, um, I, I did this many times and, and people were very much um, opposing uh, and rejecting this question in my dreams. Yeah, like most people would do it if you are on the street in whatever in the United States and you tell them, uh, are you aware that you're in a dream? They say, come on, I mean, leave me alone with this stupid idea. I mean, this is real and this is uh, uh, solid and this is that and that and so on. So now, uh, so that means about 30 years ago or so when I, I, I did do this research, I did not meet anybody in my dreams who uh, was open to the idea that uh, they are in a dream now and that they are in my dream. Uh, so now, a few years ago, I started a, a kind of research group with a, 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 a small group of young people. I did teach them uh, lucid dreaming and, and uh, some of them were very gifted and they learned it immediately and became very good lucid streamer. And so we, we started again this research and it looks now that now situation was very different, at least in our research group, yeah? That we met many people now in our dreams who were aware and were that they are dreaming and they were in certain stages different stages of lucidity yeah now um, even then there were some discussions and two lucid dreamers met because they were uh, discussing whose dream it is in which they are meeting because the first one said yeah but it's my dream because i'm lucid and now come with me i show you my body lying down there here so that you know it i'm lying down there i'm sleeping and this is my dream and then the other one said now come with me i show you my body lying also down there and and and, and so at the end they were quarreling <laughs> now whose dream is it which is extremely interesting yeah because this shows that there are also, I mean, the night dream, there are of obviously also collective night dreams, yeah? Well, like many of the indigenous people have practiced or are reported from indigenous people. Okay, now, then there was uh, another research group um, and, and one, uh, the key person in this research group 
uh, he um, developed um, the ability to travel in parallel universes. Uh, and and uh, so he, uh, he created a body when he was lucid in his dream and with this body he was traveling in, in, in other universes, in parallel universes. Now he discovered a particular interesting um, uh, uh, planet in, a, in, a, in an alternative or parallel um, uh, um, uh, universe and, uh, and so he also discovered uh, that uh, there is a different time dimension or time is different on this planet in this universe than in relation to the world, to the earth. Uh, so um, uh, and, and, the, and the ratio is about one hour on Earth is about 14 days at, in this pla at, at this planet in this universe. That means it's great. You can do a lot of research. You can make holidays there. Uh, you can uh, uh, travel around, meet people and so on. I mean, you have uh, two weeks just to be around on, on, uh, on a different planet. Yeah. Now, um, uh, he then also wanted to know uh, whether um, it's just a dream, yeah, uh, uh, th that even with this different time uh, uh, dimension and so on, or whether this, whether this is real, uh, is another reality, yeah. So um, he invited uh, several, and I was uh, also, as a young guy, I was part of, of, of uh, this uh, uh, a little bit. Uh, he invited a few people uh, to do some experiment and research. And uh, so the research worked in this way that, that we did um, know certain addresses, certain people, certain institutions in certain cities on this other planet. And, and, the, and the research was that whenever one of us became lucid <clears throat> and was traveling uh, to this uh, parallel universe and to this particular planet, uh, then we left messages there uh, either oral messages with some people we know or written messages on this planet <clears throat> and and then we were waiting until somebody of our group also was uh, in another night or in the same night but usually maybe just two or three days later or so that whenever it happened uh, uh, then I was also going there and let's say meeting at the National Library in the White City on this planet, <laughs> yeah, because we are very advanced uh, culture there. And uh, and uh, so then the, the 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 director of the uh, of the library said, okay, uh, the other name was here three days ago, three Earth days ago, yeah, and, and, and he left the following message. And then there was a sentence or there was some numbers or something like this. And, and um, then with this message, when uh, the, the second person woke up, then we phoned and, and said, you know, I, I, I was there. And, and I met this guy and he told me that three days uh, ago, you have been there and you left this message. Is this correct? And then when it was correct, uh, we did it a number of times. Yeah. So we, we knew, I mean, that this is a reality in some ways. I mean, and, you know, it's like, because all this did work out. I mean, you see the same cities, you see, you meet the same people, you talk with them, they have a, conscien a consciousness. I mean, they remember, they, uh, you know, interact and so on. So um, this, uh, this is something I think one should repeat and maybe set up dream groups again and do real solid research because I know many of the dream researchers, the scientific dream researchers, but never anybody has done something like this. Well, it's, it's, it's awe-inspiring, and it's, you know, for those that are absolutely new to this, 
potentially mind boggling, but yet it is what it is in, in working in the realm of the subconscious mind, the way that I have for as long as I have, it just makes sense, which is really just beautiful. I um, want to do our best to keep this at a focus time because each of these conversations that we're having are going to be an hour and time flies when we're in the dream right so we have been going for 55 minutes we've got five minutes left and so i, I want to be really conscious and in, in honoring uh you and honoring me and honoring the participants we're going to be going through three of these total these different webinars the biggest thing here that i would really love to you know leave as a conclusion one is the power of being present in the moment and in that awareness we have the ability to access power that would otherwise not be available to us when we're caught up in the past of the woulda coulda shouldas or when we're in the future of anxiety or worry or fear that when we're in the present moment we have access to lucidity in the dream state and in the waking state now each of you that is participating is going to be getting a gift that we are going to be emailing to you that's called the connection and it is the first step of the lifeline technique that enables you to create a practice a daily exercise for getting into the present moment you're going to love the video it's fun it's chock full of information it's different than what we've talked about but it's very relative and practical for you to get yourself present um so you'll be getting that plus a replay of today's webinar I would love if you would be so kind, my friend, to just share maybe one simple tool or hack for people to begin the journey of lucid dreaming. But also there was a question from a woman who I know and I love, her name is Karen Fullerton. And she said, if I start lucid dreaming, I sometimes wake up as soon as I start realizing it's a dream. Is there a way to keep myself in the dream so I have time to confront myself before I wake up? I'd love for you to answer that for Karen and then also give people a tool before we end this beautiful women webinar today. Okay, uh, to Karen quickly. Yes, this happens especially in the beginning uh, because one gets so excited and, and uh, that uh, finally now I'm lucid and then and, and, and pop, you wake up. So over time, this will disappear. Just don't give up and, and, and try to be not so excited. Just take <laughs> it as it comes and are just happy. And, and uh, that, that's, I think, the most important. Yeah? But this <laughs> happens in the beginning very often. Okay, now uh, the, the hack or the, the simplest way which I teach and which I use uh, is what is called a reality check. Yeah, mm. that during the day you just maybe for 20, 30 times, and this is the exercise that you don't forget it. Just wherever you are, you for a moment you, you sit still or you stand still and you ask yourself the question, I am now in, uh, awake or am I dreaming right now? And then you look around and you, you check and you say, okay, I'm awake, obviously, yeah? So if you do this for, uh, with the desire to learn lucid dreaming and, and if you do this uh, 20, 30 times a day, it becomes a kind of habit and then this will happen to you in your dream. And this is the moment then where comes your dream and because you are used to make the reality check, you say, am I dreaming or am I awake? And then you look around and say, wow, I'm dreaming, I'm dreaming, now I'm lucid. Yeah? And th that's the simplest way, but you just have to, to, uh, to do it. I love it. 
it's as simple as, am I awake or am I dreaming? You know, ever since you told me that, I've been doing that and I've been way more aware actually in my dream state, I've become more aware. It has definitely started to happen with me in a really cool way. In the Lifeline technique, and we're gonna talk about this in the next webinar where we go into transforming fear into love, because that's what living the dream is all about, is transforming fear into love. One of the steps that we're gonna talk about is what we call the truth question, because what is reality? What is the truth of reality? And so we ask a similar, a similar question, but different. Am I awake or am I dreaming? We ask, would I choose this? Yeah. Would I choose this? Would I choose this pain? Would I choose this thought? Would I choose this feeling? Would I choose this behavior? Would I choose you know, this experience? And when we're in a place where we're like, you know, hell no, I wouldn't choose this. We know we're in the dream. Yeah, great. We know we're in the dream while we're awake. It's so yeah. amazing. So we're going to jump into, into it. Hey, my brother, I love you. Thank you. <laughs> for being so bright and so beautiful and, and sharing your wisdom and your knowledge. I'm so excited about this. On the 22nd of November, you and I are coming back for the second webinar and we're gonna have such a good time. I'm so excited. I've already traveled to the future and I know it's gonna be incredible. And um, until then, each and every one of you, all of our love, infinite love and gratitude from our hearts to you. And look out for an email that will be coming your way. It will have the um, replay. If you want to share this with friends and family and groups that you know, share it. There's incredible information that's very valuable. We're going to go deeper and deeper and deeper into waking up into the dream. But you'll also receive the gift of the connection, which I'm telling you, practice this every morning and every evening when you wake up so that you can be present throughout your day. And when you go to bed, do the connection before you go to bed so that you can be present while you're asleep. Well, thank you also very much, Darren. Uh, all the best. Uh, and thank all of the people who are with us uh, because you took your valuable time uh, just to be part of our conversation. So all the best and until soon. And I love you all. In the love and gratitude. Have a great, great rest of your day, everyone. Thank you, David Kaplan, for helping us to run this. And Nina, thank you for everything that you've done. And uh, until next time, we look forward to seeing you. Have thank a beautiful you. rest of your day. Bye-bye. Have a good sleep. Bye-bye, my friend. Have a beautiful rest of your day. <laughs> okay.